Hello everyone and welcome to Content Marketing Insider powered by Repurpose.io. I'm Roy Garcia. Thanks for joining us today. Now this marks as a special occasion as we celebrate 13 Content Marketing Insider episodes. That's basically one season. Today we have something truly special just for you. A two-part compilation of game-changing advice from our distinguished guests. We have brought you the cream of the crop from the Content Marketing Insider video podcast episodes. Whether you're a seasoned marketer looking to level up your game or a beginner looking to dive into the content marketing arena, this video is your ultimate resource. Now don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't get to miss all the future episodes. Get ready for the supercut of the most valuable content marketing advice you'll find anywhere. Let's go. Hani even had, you know, he was also starting with short form content and was it difficult? Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to find it a little a bit difficult. It, it's different, I should say, because you literally, I mean, to me, I, I keep everything down to 60 seconds or less because that's, that's compatible on all the platforms. My first question to myself was, what can I say in 60 seconds that has value to my, to my audience? And that was a challenge. They're like, how, how do I say it without talking really, 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 really fast? I want to convey clear, communicate clearly in under 60 seconds. And that was the biggest challenge. And then I started kind of watching other, um, creators on TikTok, especially and seeing what they do. And, you know, I, I kind of go with a framework of the first couple of seconds is just, here's what you're going to learn in this video. Let me show you how to do this. Jump right into it. Pick one topic, talk about it for about, you know, 20, 30 seconds. And then the last, you know, 10 seconds or so, it's some kind of call to action, you know, try it, our software for free or follow for more tips or left the structure. It's like, you know, the intro slide hook, the value, the meat whether it's one or two points, no more than that. And then some kind of call to action right at the end. And the, um, the, the first three seconds of your video are the most important, especially in this world of everybody's scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. The first three seconds said, oh, hey, I'm Hanny Mora. I don't care. I don't care who you are. It's not about me creating the video, it's about, hey, let me show you how to, oh, I'm going to stick and watch that. So make your first few words not introducing yourself, but more about what the viewer is going to learn from you in this video. You mentioned something about social media channels that could close up shop for you and pull yeah. the rug under your feet. Here in Repurpose, we're always saying, go to TikTok, go to TikTok. But here, you're also saying that not just TikTok. Are there other like places that you can also recommend people that they can get started? Some people are diehard TikTok. I'm almost the opposite, where I think TikTok is a great injection, but I truly feel like it's, it's the best place to bring your followers somewhere else. And what I mean by that is like a hub, like a Facebook group, like a YouTube, uh, like more of a community, right? In, in a place like, for example, right now where people could go live or they could ask you questions or at least more than anything, get an email so that you can build that relationship through email marketing. And so I love Instagram right now just because of, I like the direct messaging systems better. I like the messaging because it's easier to People ask me questions on on uh, Instagram and I can do a voice to them. I can text them back and and TikTok's not very great with that, in my opinion. And then also we br I bring people to my Facebook group so I can cultivate them kind of like here on repurpose.io. I also have my own Facebook group and you really want to drive those people to somewhere else besides TikTok. And when I did that, I started to love it more because, you know, then my YouTube started going a little bit more. My email list got bigger. And then the secret one, my secret sauce is Pinterest ideas, right? Pinterest for me, I'm getting like 40 something thousand views per month. And that's cool because they're ranking like TikTok. You make a video and it kind of fizzles out uh, where I love about Google blogs, uh, Pinterest and YouTube is that they, they are, they are like search based. So people are like looking for these questions and about products and they're saying, Hey, what's the best treadmill? And if you have a video on that, you could start ranking. And so it's a long-term strategy combined with your short-term strategy. So that is a business, not just a platform. If I were a boring business, what would be my first step? I think the first step would really be coming up with a video strategy um, and maybe even taking yourself completely out of the educational part of it and just start to tell your story, thinking about it differently. Like they're the it's the cookie cutter things that are boring. It's the it's the general life stuff that's boring. And people are more interested in people and getting to know people. And again, like the Kardashian thing, like whether or not you you think they're interesting or love them. The bottom line is, is that they 
they've been able to grow their businesses because people have gotten the opportunity to get to know them and, and get into their lives. So no, you don't have to share like all of your baby mama drama, but telling people your story is where you can start. Um, and that could be on camera and it could be um, just the beginning of it. Um, it. Taking like really simple video of yourself working or your office or your team working um, is another really easy place to start. There's so many options, um, but really just that video would definitely be the first place that I would go. Let's say, for example, you want to talk to someone who starts having the idea of going into Pinterest. What would you tell that person? Start small and build up. So Pinterest being a parking lot for your content, that does not mean that you need to be posting three idea pins a day and you know static pins every single day. I would start with a, what I like to call a minimum viable strategy. One standard pin per day, if possible, and then do one idea pin per week. And I really want you in the beginning when you're very starting on Pinterest, you're very, very first getting started. I want you to start by flexing the muscle of building the content system for yourself. So that looks like figuring out how to find keywords on the platform and then figuring out how to create pin. And then once you figured that out, now we have to figure out how to write pin description. I want you to build the muscle of your Pinterest skill because it is a skill that you learn. So I don't want you to overload yourself with having to do, you know, 15 pins a day or anything crazy like that. I want you to start small. One idea pin per week, one standard pin per day, and then just practice that for a while. And once you get into that rhythm, like it takes me 90 minutes to do all my repurposing a week, you'll eventually get into it taking you an hour a week to create a full week's worth of content for Pinterest. And then you'll be just firing away through your entire content library, getting it all over there. And then you'll look back like 90 days later and look at your analytics and be like, oh my gosh, I have thousands of views every single month. Um, and it'll that'll pay off. And then my final parting tips to not look at your analytics. If you have a brand new Pinterest account, do not look at your analytics for 90 days. Just don't look at them. Ignore that they even exist. I just want you to build the skill. If you build the skill and you follow all of the system that I set forth for you, you will succeed over time. But if you look at your analytics and you start beating yourself up, oh my gosh, my pins aren't getting any views or clicks, then you're just going to quit. It's not just enough about creating content. It's about optimizing content output. So Mark, let, tell me a little bit about this. Like there's two things I hear from my clients and even two of my fears when I started doing this. Okay. So one, I'm shy and, and I, I, I hate my voice. I don't like to be on camera. Yada, yada. Right. That's one. But it's about you. And then when you, when you start doing it, you realize it's a lot of freaking work. There are so many things you could do, like chop it up. Obviously, you could do like long, like everyone says and Gary Vee says, you know, do you create pillar content, do you long form content and then chop it up, right? But then you, you'll be creating a 30 minute video and you'll be editing for like four hours. And then you also got to do Twitter. But then if you want to do short form, so which platform should you choose? Do you want to do YouTube? Do you want to do TikTok, Reels, Snapchat, Pinterest, LinkedIn? You know, it never ends. And it, you find yourself working a full day to put out like four 15 second clips. What I really like when I found you guys, I just, I found a tool that's actually letting me input one single piece of content and then syndicating to six other, like other different places. You could even do like snippets and all that stuff. It's really amazing. So when I found this tool, I was like, honestly, it's like from the time you save, then you could just put that time back in the video and create a piece of content that's higher quality and or you can create more different snippets. I got a quote on my desktop, it says minimum input, maximum output, least amount of work for the maximum amount of results. And this is what short form video is letting you do right now. You could just drop a clip and get hundreds, thousands, and even tens of hundreds, thousands of, of, of views in in a couple of days. And I think it's crazy for an investment of one minute, as long as you know how to tweak your video hooks and all that stuff. But I think I'm not coming here and saying I figured it all out um, because it's not the case, but I'm enjoying the process. Imposter syndrome. What is it and how will it stop someone from being very successful? Imposter syndrome just means that you don't feel like you're worthy to be doing what you're doing. So you question the ability of people to believe what it is that you're delivering. You question question, why should they listen to you? As someone who has a pasta syndrome feels like they're going to tell themselves, why would someone listen to me? Like I just started three months ago. 
So the important thing about overcoming imposter syndrome is to always make sure that your message that you're delivering is from a place of where you are. So if you've only been at this for three months, six months, a year, be honest about that. Be honest about where you got the information that you're sharing and how you've applied it in your own business. That's the number one way that I have found that people really ward off imposter syndrome and not feeling like they're fake, right? Because we all want to match ourselves to the person who has 10 years experience, you know, the, the beautiful content creators that do it flawlessly. But what you don't see is behind the scenes, right? You don't see behind the scenes of experience, team, support that they have and all that. So be true to where you are in your process and be true to why you're sharing it, how you're sharing it and how you're using it. And that really is a good way to really prevent imposter syndrome from making you quit your business. What would be the first step that they could take to get themselves out of the imposter syndrome pit? So the first step that anybody can take is acknowledge what your thoughts are. Write them down on a piece of paper and flip them from the negative to the positive and, and truly keep going through your day flipping that because when you flip those negative thoughts that are coming into your head into positive you're doing two things one you're acknowledging which allows you to change it and two you're changing it which allows your brain to be rewired to think like oh okay you want me to hold on to the positive stuff and not the negative stuff so it's kind of like if you wanted to run a marathon you're not going to mm -hmm. put on your, your running shoes and go out and run if you've been a couch potato for 10 years you have to build up that endurance so if you want to build up your mindset endurance. It takes daily actionable steps to break that automatic thought process that is probably negative and not serving. And that wraps up part one of Content Marketing Insider Supercut powered by Repurpose.io. We hope that you found immense value in the strategies and tips in this video. But hold on tight because there's more to come in part two. In the upcoming installment, we'll be unveiling more priceless strategies and game-changing advice from our esteemed special guests. You don't want to miss this one. Now make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that when we release Supercut number two, you're going to know it. For Repurpose.io, I'm Roy Garcia and I'll see you on Supercut number two.